I shall speak to you in the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. It is such a pleasure to be with you here at All Saints today to be part of this wonderful celebration of baptisms and the Holy Eucharist. On behalf of myself, my wife Rafa, and my chaplain, Canon Don Binder, I would like to thank Father Mike and all of the staff and congregation for your warm welcome and generous hospitality to us this morning. I was especially glad to have some time with many of you at the forum before the service today and to share some stories about our Christian ministry in the Diocese of Jerusalem and the Holy Lands. We are grateful for your prayers and support as we continue that work in which the very place where Jesus Christ himself ministered during his earthly ministry. Speaking of this, our gospel reading this morning, we find our Lord on pilgrimage to the holy city of Jerusalem itself for the feast of the Passover, Pesach. He had just visited the temple there where he'd seen a widow generously contributing her two mites to the offering box. After some of his disciples had praised the temple's beautiful stones and decorations, Jesus spoke to them some shocking words. He predicted that the great temple would all soon be destroyed. For them, this must have been unbelievable. The temple was a huge complex, spread over 35 acres. It was built from thousands of stones, each one weighing thousands of pounds. How could this be suddenly cast down and destroyed? Yet as hard as this was to believe, within 40 years, Jesus' prediction would come true. In the year 70 AD, after Christ, the Romans captured Jerusalem from the zealots and cast every stone of the temple to the ground. For the Jews who remained alive in 70 AD, the loss of Jerusalem and the temple must have felt like the end of the world. Many of them probably felt like it was the end of their religion, the end of the Jewish people themselves. Even for the Christians of Jerusalem, it must have felt this way. By then, most of them had fled to the city of Pella in the Decapolis, on the other side of the Jordan River. The church of the apostles in Jerusalem was no more. It was living in exile. Yet as we know, this was not the end of the world for Jews or for Christians. Judaism would continue on. It would grow and adapt, finding new ways to worship God without the temple. One could imagine that the stones of the temple now have built most of the houses in and around Jerusalem. They knew that the power of the written word, the Torah and the Tanakh, will continue to preserve the identity of the Jewish people. It was the same for the Jerusalem church. Eventually, the exiles would return to the holy city, even though it would take almost 300 years. Christians would eventually reclaim the site of Jesus' crucifixion, they would eventually discover the empty tomb in the church of the Holy Sepulchre that came to be. Queen Helena would lead them in building over top of them the great church of the empty tomb and the edicule, the Holy Sepulchre, or the church of the resurrection as we know it today. Many of you here have visited it as it stands there even to this day, to this very day. And so we see that out of this time of death and destruction that Jesus predicted, new life emerged. From a great and terrible ending, 
there came a new beginning, a new opportunity, and a new possibility. This is just like our Lord's death and resurrection itself. For Jerusalem is not only the city of the crucifixion, it is also the city of the resurrection. For those of us who live there, as for Christians who live all around the world, this is what continues to give us hope as Christians because of the city of the resurrection, the city of hope, the city of Jerusalem. As you know, my own people have faced great hardship over the past 75 years. For those living in 1948 inside the state of Israel, many of them lost their homes and loved ones. They became refugees. Many of them wandered from place to place. That is why we call this event Nakba or the catastrophe. It was the year that our world fell apart. Yet even here, many of those families went on to find a new life. Some of them came to this country, to this land of opportunity, where they were able to prosper. Not everyone, of course, was so fortunate. There are still thousands living in refugee camps on both sides of the Jordan River, and even in Jerusalem itself. They continue to struggle under the occupation. Indeed, we all continue to feel its effects. Yet for Christians, we find our hope in the empty tomb. We find our hope in Christ's resurrection. This is the same hope we find in this morning's baptisms. About these, the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of our Father, so we might walk in newness of life. In our baptisms, we are all joined with Christ not only in his death, but also in his resurrection. This allows us to walk in the newness of life through the power of the Holy Spirit. All of this is not just important for our salvation in the world to come. It is important for us also in the here and now of everyday life. For we all face our difficult challenges. We all have moments in our lives when the world seems to be coming to an end. Indeed, for most of the past two years of the pandemic, our world felt like this way. We wondered whether there would be a time when we could leave our home safely. We wondered if there would be ever a time when we could go back to our jobs, our schools, and yes, our churches. For those of us who kept our hope in Christ, we were able to move forward. Through the difficult times, we found new way of worshiping, new ways of relating to each other. By the power of God, we were able to overcome many obstacles to reach this new day. And so for those soon to be baptized, as well as for their parents and godparents, along with everyone here, in this wonderful church, I bring to you from Jerusalem this message of hope. The empty tomb in our midst is there for us both physically and metaphorically. Only the metaphor is not just a metaphor. It is an icon of higher reality, God's reality, being in the presence of the holy. Stepping out of that empty tomb we step out into God's new world of love and mercy and grace. Our minds and our spirits are transformed so that we can see the world with new eyes. We can see the world with eyes of hope and possibility and opportunity. I pray that all of us may see more clearly into this vision, that we can see with the eyes of the risen Lord 
our Lord Jesus Christ, looking beyond the broken stones of the past and beholding a bright new vision of the future for ourselves and for all of God's people. May the Lord bless you all. May the Lord bless all saints. And may the Lord bless the Diocese of Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Thank you.